From Debbie'sDesignDiary.com, this is Serial DIY, one house repurposed week by week. This is episode 8, The Mexican Dresser and the Story of My Two Dads. Each member of my family is very different, like the contrasting colors in a serape but we are all woven together to create a beautiful story with lots of imperfections and love. I'm 50% Mexican. I don't know what the other half is. I could be German, Irish. The only thing I knew about my biological father was that my mom met him in a bar in Tijuana. It turns out that my mom met the dad who raised me in the same bar in Tijuana a year later. So my dad dad and my biological dad both came from the same bar in Mexico. At any rate, I'm definitely a Mexican. I found the dresser on Craigslist. It was $60. It was a 1930s solid oak and I knew it would be the perfect canvas to create the serape look on. It's right back there. I took the sander and I sanded off the honey oak and then I put on this right here. This is dark and decrepit. It's water-based and it doesn't s smell very strong. The dated honey oak stain came right off in about three minutes with my electric sander. Then I applied dark and decrepit, which acts like a stain on raw wood. It's very concentrated, so I dip my brush in water to move it around and get the look that I wanted. I used just about one-third of this eight ounce container on the top and sides of this beautiful dresser. My mom was always very, very serious. I had to like squeeze information to find out what my dad looked like. My mom had green eyes and blonde hair. By process of elimination, I kind of figured out that my dad must have brown hair with brown eyes and freckles because my mom didn't have those. You take this, no idea why it comes in this. I'm thinking that they want to keep the tape from drying out. You just get a strip of it and you put it down on the dresser and then you paint it. It rips really easy like this and I used the tape as a guide but I wasn't concerned with perfect lines because I plan to blend the colors together for an ombre effect. I use Kissing Booth, Cowgirl Coral, and Petticoat Pink. I also cut several colors with white to create various shades of the same color. My mom did tell me what his name was, so I decided to put it into Facebook. There were only two Mexican dudes with that name that popped up, so I wrote to both of them and turns out one of them was my dad. See right here where I have the aqua color? and then I have this very pale mint color. You take a little tiny brush like this, I dip my brush in the water, and then I reactivated the paint. And then you blend the two colors together. And so then the transition from one color to the next color is more fluid and watercolor-like. Because DIY paint is made from clay, you can reactivate it. I dipped a small brush in water and blended the colors together at the lines to create a softer transition. I got an email from Facebook, this guy saying that he might be my dad. So then my mom started telling me to ask him questions like what was his nickname and what car did he drive in 1966. He happened to answer all the questions right so we kind of figured that it must be him. Then I got to meet him for the first time five years ago on Mother's Day. Hold on. Ah! It's tight on the lid. This is faded burlap. I wanted it to look really old and decrepit and I wanted to put a lot of patina in it. It's not that I got lazy and I, I was tired of painting the stripes. I painted stripes on it and it didn't look right. This is the paint right here. It's a little tiny ball of clay. You can manipulate the paint to do whatever it is that you want it to do. When the paint gets to where it starts to turn into clay, you take the putty knife and you scrape it up and then you smush it back down and it creates this very textured adobe finish. 
DIY paint will turn into clay when it's about 90% dry. For an aged effect, add a layer of paint thicker in the areas where you want to create texture. When the surface dries to a clay-like consistency, use a putty knife to pull up the paint and smush it back onto the surface. If you take up too much paint, you can easily add a touch-up coat and still retain the texture. Then lightly sand to smooth out any rough areas. My mom passed away in May. I miss her every single day, but I am very blessed that God gave me two dads. They are both very different and they are both highly lovable, excellent men. One of my dads was in a past video. You can click right here and see what he's all about. I very lightly sanded it. And the paint turned into a dusty pigment. I waxed it with the pigment still sitting on the surface. It added to the whole blended ombre situation. The final step was to wax the entire dresser. I sanded the stripes and left some of the loose pigment sitting on the surface. Then I used the wax to further blend the colors together. The wax will deepen the color, allow to dry, and then buff to a beautiful, buttery smooth finish. Does it look like a Mexican blanket to you? I love it. I'm super excited to put it in my bedroom and get all of my clothes into it because my closet is kind of exploding right now. Let me know in the comments if you've found any lost long relatives or friends on Facebook. As of this moment, I'm 109 subscribers away from hitting 100,000. Help me get my YouTube silver play button by subscribing to my channel. And to find DIY paint in your area or to sell it in your store, click the link below. Thanks for watching.